What's up everybody, welcome back. Today we're aquascaping the 400 gallon aquarium we had to completely empty after the disaster in the last video where the carpet got completely soaked. And we're gonna get right into it. The first step was to add back in some of the sand. What I used was black diamond blasting sand. It's pretty cost effective. I think it was like $10 per 50 pound bag. It has no nutrients in it though, so if you plan on using the same, You'll probably need to use root tabs just like I will if you want to grow plants in it. There will actually be close to 500 pounds of this sand going into the aquarium. I didn't initially add all of it though, just enough to cover the bottom of the tank for now. Once I did that, I added in some of the rocks, starting with some of the larger ones. You'll see some of them are a little green, that's because they were previously used in the tank and already had some algae on them. Figuring out exactly how I wanted to arrange everything in the tank was not a quick process though, it did take me all day. It took a lot of fiddling and adjusting to get things just right. At this point I added in some of the wood as well and it eventually started to all come together. I did add in some new pieces of wood and rocks as well. But there were a few issues I had with the first scape that I wanted to fix this time around. The biggest one was floating wood. So this time I tied down parts of the wood that I knew would be buried under the sand to small rocks. I even added some glue just as an extra measure to make sure it stayed down. The most annoying part the first time around was the huge log I have here that if you remember I just could not get to sink even after months of being in the tank. I also couldn't stand the random rock I had to sit on top of it that looked completely out of place. So this time I was determined to incorporate the sand and rocks that would keep the log down into the actual scape. I knew with piling the sand this high it may not be as stable when I fill it up but I had some extra sand on the side that I kept just so I could fill it in later. If all of this couldn't keep the log down, nothing would. Then I went in and added in some of the smaller pieces of rock, I shaped the sand how I liked it, and I added in some of the smaller pieces of wood as well. And this was the initial form of the scape I came up with. Now I'm definitely not a professional when it comes to aquascaping, nowhere even close to it. This is just the second time I've ever even tried it. But I liked how it was turning out. I liked how wide open one side of the tank was. It would let me leave plenty of swimming room for the fish. Then I went back and added a few more accent pieces of wood. Some of them already had plants on them. That's because they were taken from the previous scape and they were already glued on there. And then it was finally time to start adding water. I actually stuck the python tube down into the substrate to stop the water from disturbing too much of the sand. Some people may also use a bowl or a rock to block the stream of water and stop it from messing up the scape they just worked on. Just like I thought, some of the sand was unstable and started shifting as the water level increased. I just went ahead and added some of my extra rocks in areas that needed them to help secure it. There were also a few pits created that I had to go through and add a little more extra sand to. The water was very cloudy, but I decided to pause here for a moment and start adding in some plants. There was the Crenum Calamastratum, Ananubius Barteri. I know this next one is an Anubius as well, but I actually could use some help identifying it. Let me know in the comments if you think you know what this is. There was a second Anubius Barteri. Another Anubius I could use some help identifying, but I do have a closer shot of this one later in the video. The Dwarf Aquarium Lily, which is definitely seeing better days. A Red Tiger Lotus. And a lot of Crypt Parva. It is one of the smallest and slowest growing crypts that I chose for the carpet. Part of the reason I chose it is because I did not want to put any carpeting plant in the tank that I would need to trim very often, if at all. I felt like chasing down all the clippings for some of the other faster growing carpeting plants may be a nightmare in the future. But let me know what you think down in the comments if you know another carpeting plant that I would not ever need to trim because it grows more than a few inches tall, let me know. But back to adding plants, there was a Altanothera Rosenervig.
Ludwigia Super Red Mini. Ludwigia Periwensis. And last but not least, Java Fern. It's crazy how much better a couple of plants can make the scape look. And then at this point I was ready to fill up the tank the rest of the way. And then I had the chance to step back and see what I had put together. Because of how rushed I was in getting a lot of these plants out of the tank short notice, they're definitely not all in the best shape right now. While they weren't in here, they definitely weren't getting all the light they would have wanted. I am expecting a few of the plants to possibly die back a little before they can come back. I could have gotten rid of them and gotten new plants, but it would feel wasteful to me to get rid of a bunch of plants that I have a chance at saving. Coming back from what happened in the last video wasn't easy, but I got so much support from you all in the comments and it all really helped, so thank you all for that. In the next video we'll probably be adding back in the fish, so like, comment, and subscribe if you want to follow along. See you all next time.